Hello and welcome to Linear Equations. How to tutor them and make sure you, the students you're working with understand the fundamentals behind it. The first is the word algebra. Now when you take numbers such as 6, 3, 8, 7, 2 and you take and do operations on those uh, this is what we call arithmetic and we get answers over here now so such as 6 times plus 3 times 2 and you get 6 plus and you have order of operations and you put numbers together and you can add subtract multiply and divide and you have scientific notation all that other stuff that's going that way well when you start out with the answers and have to go backwards so first of all let's write down that everything going this way is backwards such as when we say 6 x equals 42 we're actually starting out with the end result and we have to undo what was here undo what was there well this is where we actually get the word algebra it's an Arabic word meaning to go back to the original or to find out what once was there what was missing so in this case we are trying to find out what X is and if we're headed backwards well, yeah, you guys have solved this. What do you do? You undo this multiplication by division. So that's actually the first idea, is that all of algebra deals with backwards of arithmetic. Now, obviously, when we divide by 6, divide by 6, we're doing something with arithmetic over on this side, but the initial idea, the concept of undoing is actually in highfalutin math lingo that's called composition of inverse functions but what we're doing here is going backwards so let's let's talk about that a little bit we could take a problem such as 3m plus 7 all divided by 5 plus 4 equals and say that equaled 9 then how would we undo and go backwards on this well if we look at it in in special terms here if this is the m by arithmetic standards this is the first thing that hits it then this is the second thing that hits it and then all that was divided by five and that was the last one there if we peel this off in reverse order such as subtract four then this entity had to equal five times by five because it's the opposite of dividing by five and we get hey we're at 25 now subtract 7 and we get 18 and divide by 3 and we get 6 m equals 6 now you can tell I've skipped a lot of steps but the idea of peeling stuff off from the outside in is very very handy for students to understand that they are going backwards and this is illustrated by a popular vegetable so I'm going to draw to the best of my ability an artichoke there we go couple of those right there and right down here right there that's the good stuff that's the heart ah uh, that's what you can eat and put on pizza with salami and alfredo sauce it's pretty good stuff but the idea of an artichoke is that in order to eat it you peel off these outside layers you can't jump right down to the heart of the matter and then peel that off in with any degree of success whatsoever so peeling off from the outside in and that's exactly what happens here let's do it in a different color so you can kind of see the M was right there and we peeled it off in reverse order so you can see we undid the plus 4 with a minus 4 and then it times by 5 and then subtract 7 and so on so that's one thing that that will help students a great deal is the idea of undoing it from the outside in and they may get really complex with parentheses and stuff if the M is in one location you can just peel everything off okay the other major concept that we need to make sure everybody gets is that when you have an equals sign this is a verb that means this side over here is the same as this side so in that sense we have a balance there we go and you put some weight over here and some weight over here and they are exactly the same so a balance is exactly that if you had a blob that was X and you didn't know how big it was and a blob that was nine pounds and then over here you had a blob that was 10 and you had a blob that was say nine pounds and you took this blob off and you took that blob off then the X is equal to 10 and that's the idea we're peeling these guys off 
and we're doing the same thing to the other side until we get x down by itself. That's the idea of equivalent equations. Every time we do one of these operations to both sides of the equation, and that's really the kicker there, hard and fast rule of algebra, you have to do it to both sides. One, if you do that, you remain balanced until you get x by itself, and you have now, ta-da, found out what once was there. So let's go through and illustrate. There is a process that will be used in all the departments here that will help you to in tutoring your students. This three-step process, or sometimes it's broken up into five steps, will solve any linear equation that students will come across. And it bases it off the fact that normally we have, hey, see something like this, 2x plus 3 equals 8. They know how to do something like this. They're like, yeah, we can peel off, subtract 3 from both sides, and yes, they should be showing their work most of the time until they really get it and then divide by 2 and x equals 5 halves. Okay, good. So they're able to do that. Once they get to this point, life seems pretty good. Note that what we do here is in reverse order of order of operations. We take care of the addition subtraction, then the multiplication and the division because we are indeed going backwards. So yeah, that's the easiest one here. Do the opposite. If you've got addition or subtraction, do the opposite. When you do multiplication or division, do the opposite. Once it's down at this happy math land, Look at that, that's nice. The whole idea of step number one, or these three sub-steps, is to get it down to there. If you have parentheses, well, yeah, distribute. If you have fractions, multiply through by the least common denominator. And if you have multiple x's, combine. Get them all onto one side, the same side. And some people say, hey, get variables on one side and numbers on the other. Really, this right here, and then this step number two, that's exactly what happens, numbers and variables on, on the same side. But these three steps will be familiar to your students, so please use them in, in order to solve some stuff. I will walk you through one big one that has a little bit of everything. If I have two-thirds, x minus 7 plus 3x equals 7 halves x plus 2 minus 5. All right, so we look at this right here. Does it have parentheses? Yes, indeed it does. So we jump those through. Good. Jump that through, and we get 2 thirds x minus 14 thirds. Be very careful right there that that 7 does not times the bottom. That's a 7 over 1. Plus 3x equals 7 halves x plus 7 minus 5. Good. Now, this could be done in two steps. We have fractions, so we've got to multiply through by the least common denominator, which means you're multiplying through by 6. If you multiply everything through by 6, it will magically do it. If you would like to, you can actually change each of these fractions. That would be a 4 sixth x minus a times that 28 sixth plus this times by 6 and 6, you get 18x over 6 equals, and so on and so forth. Then when you multiply by 6, you'll notice all that happens is all the 6s cancel. Some people like to do it in those two steps, but it is not totally necessary. So let's go to uh, how most people will do it, and that is you times everything by 6 from the get-go here. There we go every single piece and we get um, that would be a 4x oh look at that minus 28 plus 18x equals 6 times 7 halves that's 21x 42 and then minus 30 and yeah that's it now we have multiple x's let's combine everything now you should note that in the algebra world there are simplify problems and there are solve problems Simplify, do not have an equal sign. No equal sign. Solve has an equal sign. Right now, this overarching problem is an equals problem. However, each side here, where I put these together and I get 22x minus 28, and this one over here, where I have 21x plus 12, that those were simplify problems. They weren't solve problems. We simplified stuff. Now we're getting them onto the same side. So when we put these guys on the same side, we're going to say, hey, we could get rid of one of these. And this is where we have to do the same thing to both sides. So we get x minus 28 equals 12. And add 28, we get x equals 40. Oh, good. That should 
warm your little heart to s make sure you can do anything that is that tough. And finally, absolute value. Let's remember what absolute value does. What's the absolute value of 7? Well, it's 7. Absolute value of negative 7? Seven? 7. Absolute values were invented because negative numbers sometimes just don't make any sense at all. Indeed, that's right. Have you ever seen a rope negative 10 feet long? Have you ever traveled negative 30 miles? And you're like, well, sort of, if you travel 30 miles backwards. Ah, that's the idea. Negative actually means other direction. And when you're talking about distance, you always need them positive. So that's why absolute values were there. Well, notice it takes a positive and a negative and puts it to the same point. So that means that, yeah, if you have absolute value of x equals 7, in order to undo absolute value, you need to split it into two equations. The official mathematically correct one is that it splits into negative x can equal a 7 or x can equal a 7 if x is less than 0 and if x is greater than 0. Okay, so that's the official stuff. However, some of you will not quite want to go that deep into it, but it is absolutely correct. And just write, hey, look, here we have x equals 7, write the positive one, and x equals a negative 7, which totally makes sense compared to what we have. So if we have something like 2x plus 3 equals 18, then it's going to split. You've got to get the absolute value by itself and then split it into 2x plus 3 equals 18 and 2x plus 3 equals a negative 18. And then solve each one of them and you get the answers. Subtract 3, 2x equals 15 and x equals 15 halves. Over here, subtract 3 and you get 2x equals negative 21. Watch that negative and x equals negative 21 halves. Good. Now, what happens when you have negatives by it. So 2x plus 3 equals a negative 18. Oh, that one's not so good, is it? Why is that not so good? Well, try it. You might split them up and follow the process, but you've missed the concept of absolute value. Absolute value always turns everything positive. This guy right here, automatically, no solution. Why? Because this right here, this is positive. No matter what, no matter what I stick in for x, this is a positive number. Positives equaling a negative? I don't think so. All right, let's look at inequalities. Absolute value of x is greater than 7. Let's look and see what this looks like. Well, here's 0, here's 7, here's negative 7. Well, we know that all of these numbers are right up here. Yeah, indeed. These are x bigger than 7. So all of these guys, if you make them positive, will be there. Notice their negatives also have to work down here. So any of these guys, if you make them positive, ching, they'll flip right up there. And so we actually get two answers. x is greater than 7, x is less than 7. Both of these areas work, and that is an OR statement. Written in interval notation, it looks like this, from negative infinity up to negative 7. And if this was an equal sign, you remember what happens there? You fill in the dot, fill in the dot, and this is a square bracket, meaning we include negative 7 in the answer. Or the symbol is union, and then it goes 7 up to infinity, like that. Okay, now let's look at this other one. If we were to do less than 7, like that. Well, let's look at the numbers that work here. There's 0, there's 7, there's negative 7. Let's find out the numbers. Do 8, 9, 10? No, they don't work. But 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 work. And their negatives work. But do I keep going on forever? I don't. I don't do that at all. Which means it is trapped. You have the x is less than 7 and that x is bigger than negative 7. Notice I switched signs. x is now on the big side of the inequality of negative 7. But it's not just it can be either all the way up there or all the way down there. This is an and statement and will most often be written like this. Greater than negative 7. In interval notation, let's write that down. It goes to the interval from negative 7 to 7. Open open, meaning we do not actually hit 7 or negative 7. Of course, if this were an underlined, it would be blocked in. 
Now notice what this is as far as distance is concerned. This is saying the distance of whatever is in here has to be bigger than or equal to 7. So it's almost like you put this fence out here and the distance has to be outside the fence, clear out there, which means it can go on forever. Here, this distance has to be less than 7, which means what? Well, yeah, it kind of means that we're stuck inside the fence. And that's how you can tell the difference between these two types of inequalities. So let's see how that works with some bigger ones. 2x plus 3, absolute value, less than 5. That means that this is constrained between 5 and negative 5. And how do you solve that? Let's put an equal sign on there just for variety. Well, you would solve that. Notice that 2x plus 3 is bigger than or equal to the negative. So we're still splitting it just like with the equal sign, but it comes out looking a little different. Subtract 3 from here, here, and here. So we get negative 8, less than or equal to 2x, less than or equal to 2. Divide everything by 2, and look at that. We have x less than or equal to 1. In a graph, it looks like this. x is stuck, there's 0, there's 1, and there's negative 4. We're stuck in between these two. Now, closed dots and square brackets mean the same thing. The square brackets will help you to identify how to write it in interval notation, like that. Let's do the same problem, 2x plus 3 greater than 5. This means that we've got a distance that is greater than 5, so we're going to shoot off to infinity. And yeah, this will split into these two equations, which are going to be OR statements. 2x plus 3 is bigger than 5. 2x plus 3 less than negative 5. So let's go ahead and solve these individually. Subtract 3, and I get 2x bigger than 2 and x bigger than 1. Or 2x less than negative 8, x less than negative 4. And notice what happens here. Here's 0, here's 1, and here's negative 4. And we are open circle, bigger than 1, open circle, less than 4. Yes, and that makes sense. Notice when we split, this negative 1 goes the opposite direction because we actually divided by a negative 1. So we have negative infinity to negative 4, union, or 1 to infinity. And that's interval notation as well. Before we leave this, we should note that you might see something like this, 2x plus 3 less than a negative 5. Now, if you immediately go and try to split it up, you're going to end up with some unusual uh, inequalities that should surprise you. I'll let you guys try that. But notice what's happening here. This is a positive number. Is a positive number ever less than negative 5? Nope. You don't even have to do the problem. No solution. Okay, what if I had something like this? 2x plus 3. That's an absolute value. Bigger than negative 5. Ah, oh, you think no solution again. Not actually. It will never equal a negative 5. will never be smaller than negative 5, but positives will always be bigger. In this case, x is all numbers. Yeah, no matter what I stick in there and make it positive, it will be bigger than a negative 5. Okay, there's linear equation.